Well, good Monday morning, everybody. It is April 12th, and it is a blustery, blustery day here in Lake City. So, uh, at any rate, um, before I start, I do want to uh, uh, just say that uh, I do post these videos every day onto LinkedIn, uh, which is a, uh, is a networking site for business people. Um, and I do notice that uh, on that site, I, we have regularly have folks watching from New Zealand and the United Kingdom as, as well as other places. So, and uh, just out of curiosity, if you're one of those folks watching this on LinkedIn, you know, give us a comment, say hi. Uh, we'd love to know, uh, know, know who you are and uh, see who, you know, who else is watching. We see people watching it from all over the country, uh, South Carolina and what have you, Colorado, you name it. Um, it is interesting to see those, uh, those locations. Don't know who the people are because it doesn't tell us that. So, but it's curious. So say hi um, on, if you're on LinkedIn, if you're on YouTube too, or on Facebook, say hi. At any rate, um, we've made the change today, this Monday morning to chapter 10. And we are going to look at the first eight verses in chapter 10 today. We're just going to get started on the story of Peter and Cornelius. We're not going to get very far into it. It's a fairly lengthy story and there's a lot of parts to dissect on it so trying to take the whole bite at one time would be just way too much um if you remember we left off with peter having healed or brought back to life uh, dorcas uh, tabitha uh, and she was in joppa and we left off with him having saying he was stayed in joppa uh with simon the tanner for a while uh some time it says in the scripture so that's interesting so while he is in Joppa, this is all going to transpire. So here we go. Acts 10, first eight verses. In Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion of the Italian cohort, as it was called. He was a devout man who feared God for, with all his household. He gave alms generously to the people and prayed constantly to God. One afternoon at about three o'clock, he had a vision in which he clearly saw an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius. He stared at him in terror and said, What is it, Lord? He answered, Your prayers and your alms have ascended as a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa for a certain Simon, who is called Peter. He is lodging with Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. When the angel who spoke to him had left, he called two of his slaves with a devout soldier from the ranks of those who served him. And after telling them everything, he sent them to Joppa. Okay. First of all, uh, this Cornelius is a centurion, which means he is basically a, a, a little more than what we would call a sergeant today, um, and a little bit more prestige, more rank than that, but not quite as, as a, a, you know, a, a, a officer um, yet. Be an, in, um, kind of in between, I guess, is what I'm told. Um, but he would have been in charge of about a hundred men, roughly. It would vary during the history of the of the Roman Empire how many men there were there, but that's why they called it a centurion. One hundred. Get it? Easy to figure out. And he is a centurion in the Italian cohort, uh, which was a famous regiment. That was a famous group. Um, they were basically elite, and they were sent to troubled areas. They were um, along the lines of an army ranger or something, except they didn't jump out of airplanes because they didn't have airplanes back then. Um, but at any rate, they were uh, they were considered some of the creme de la creme, uh, as they say. And uh, he, so he's someone. And those folks would have been from Italy. They would have been uh, Roman citizens by birth, uh, of course, uh, at, from Italy. At least he would have been. He would have been as the head of it. We know that he's at least 30 years old because you had to be at least 30 years old to be a centurion. Um, and we know that they have to be people that are very obedient and, and driven and uh, competent. And these are these are these are not just your run of the mill folks. And a centurion was a more visible person of them. Uh, they were supposed to kind of go around and make themselves known in the community so that people knew who they were and saw them, you know, if you know, as the power of Rome there in the in that area. So he would have been well known, uh, at least in that area that he was in charge of. And he was in charge of that area, you know, of a particular area. Caesarea. Uh, Caesarea is a very, has, has had kind of a uh, um, dynamic, let's use the word dynamic, uh, history. We're not going to talk about that, but Caesarea definitely has had some turmoil and troubles, and that's probably why they have the Italian cohort there. Okay. Um, so, but he is a devout man. He's a God fearer. We've talked about God fearers before, and we'll continue to talk about God fearers. Um, so, he is someone that is 
devout to Judaism, but he's not converted because he's a Gentile. Now, we've already gone through and we've seen Philip has gone to the Sumerians, which was strange and odd. And then um, then he went to the Ethiopian. Uh, and so that's beginning to move out. And the Ethiopian, of course, was a god fear also, remember? Unable to become a, a Jew because of his um, being a eunuch. Not, 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 a, not something that was going to be able, he was going to be able to do anything about. Um, but yet he was brought into the fold, so to say. Um, and here we have Cornelius, um, and he is definitely, definitely a Gentile. So we're moving out, and here uh, it, it's ever widening circles, I guess, is what we're looking at, and bringing in those that don't fit, as they say. Um, but he's a generous man. He's a charitable man. He like like Tabitha, who we talked about yesterday or Saturday, um, where she was, you know, helping others, making clothes for some of the widows. It would seem, um, and here this fellow has not just been there, being ruling over this area in Caesarea. He's actually been giving money to folks and helping folks out. He's being known as someone that was not just a terror, you know, ruling by terror or by force, the Pacla Romana, but someone that generally cares about the people. And this this has been noticed by God. And this is a big part of why God has sent the angel to him uh, and why he is saying for him to send for Peter. It's a, it's a beginning of something very interesting, very, very interesting. Um, so he is a devout man. Um, and here we continue this story that we've been talking about all the way through Acts so far. It pops up over and over, pops up in Luke, pops up in the whole Bible. And this is the story of obedience. Um, this man has been told by God um, to go and get P Peter and to have him come see him. Um, does he squab squabble with God at all? I mean, it's not like Zechariah about way back in Luke's gospel where he's like, I, how can that be? Or, you know, some of the others that debate with God. Um, no, he is obedient. He's rem reminiscent of the centurion whose servant was ill and sent for Jesus and said, you don't need to come to my home. Um, I, I'm not worthy of that. He understood, recognized God's authority th through Christ. And this is the same thing here. This Cornelius, he's recognizing that authority. He is an obedient person. He recognizes the, 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 the authority of God. Um, and doesn't question the authority of God at all. Um, so that's really a big part of it as we begin this story of Peter and Cornelius. That's a big part of what, what we just walk away from this is this obedience. Again, it's been a common thread through Acts already. Uh, all the way, Philip being obedient and going to talk to the eunuch and what have you. It's been there um, popping up over and over. It's going to continue to pop up also. Um, you know, Ananias going, uh, Ananias going to to, uh, to Paul, even though he's afraid. Though Ananias did squabble a bit, didn't he? He was a Jewish a Jewish man squabbling a little bit, and here this this uh, Gentile doesn't argue, doesn't question. God said to do it, we'll do it, and he sends his slaves and a and a devout soldier, someone a devout soldier. So. Um, the, Apparently, perhaps this soldier is also a god fear, just like Cornelius. Interesting, isn't it? So, we'll kind of continue this story um, tomorrow and the rest of the week. It might take us several days this week to get through this whole story. It's an important story, though. It's the beginning of something totally new, um, even though it did kind of start with the Ethiopian, I think. Uh, and it did start with the Sumerians. Um, but it's catching, catching steam, as they say. So I'm going to let you go with that. Uh, have a very blessed day. And please, please, please be a blessing to someone today. And again, if you're watching this on, on whatever social media program that I've got it posted up on, um, let us know where you're at, who you are. Have a very blessed day again. And we'll see you tomorrow. We'll talk more about Cornelius and Peter going to see him. All right. In Caesarea. Bye-bye.